My topic was infrared modules classification in ultrasound imaging by artificial intelligence method. Uh, it was last year from, from February to August. So first of all, what are steroid nodules? Steroid nodules are uh, a solid fluid filled uh, lumps formed inside the steroid ground. Normally they are, uh, they are asymptomatic and benign. We don't need special treatment for that, but still there exists a, a, a risk of, uh, of, of, of steroid cancer. So, in the, so it's uh, necessary to distinguish the malignancy for the third nodules. And now we all have already established a SARA standard uh, of the diagnosis and management of third nodules, uh, where the ultrasound imaging and the biopsy take uh, the most important roles. But even after all, all these kind of uh, examinations, still there, there exists some indeterminate, indeterminate nodules. And in this kind of case, the, the doctor will always uh, recommend and conduct the thyroidectomy, uh, the, the, the surgery to remove the whole organ. But unfortunately, after the surgery, uh, we often find that uh, uh, the nodules in the removed organ, they were in fact not cancerous. So there is a need to, to there is a need to, um, to have more precise diagnosis for thyroid nodules in order to uh, reduce the, the re, re, reduce the use of the surgery and for the, for the welfare of the patient. And how can we achieve this goal? Uh, uh, first, we, we noticed that there are many information collected by the doctor, but we don't know how could we use them by, uh, for, the, for the purpose of diagnosis. Also, now, thanks to the development of medical technology, we have some new uh, imaging tools like the shear wave elastograph, etc. Also, the same problem. We don't know how to use them properly for the diagnosis. We, uh, we, uh, we, we are uh, on the way of finding their, their, um, their, their advantage. There are something new, but we don't know how to use it. Also, so uh, now the artificial intelligence is well developed and widely used in every aspect of our life. So we were wondering if we can find some solution by the artificial intelligence to discover the uh, to discover a new way of, uh, for the better diagnosis of very nodules, uh, make use of the new imaging tool and the, all the information we could collect for the thyroid nodules. The first way I have a look at our database. Uh, our database consists of two parts, the image part and the structure data part. Uh, the, uh, originally, we have uh, um, two, 279 patients, or according to 7,508 uh, images. And this image, they, they consist of two parts. Uh, first part is the uh, third modality image, uh, uh wave electrograph, and B mode image. And the second part is electrograph with quanti quantitative measurements where we can write the, the elasticity data. Uh, so uh, in the first part of the image, uh, first of all, we need to remove all the image with the nodules uh, with the indeterminate nodules because uh, for because this this part of image they serve as a training database of the neural networks we only need the certain diagnosis um, the un the uncertain ones they are useless for us so first we remove this part and then we also remove the patient who we have the diagnosis but we don't have the corresponding image so after that we have only, only 112 patients, and among them, 27 are with malignant nodules, others are with benign nodules. And for the, for the uh, quantitative, uh, quantitative uh, measurements part, we, have, we use the optical character recognition to write the Qbox elasticity data, and we have 3,301 Qbox data. And here we have some example of the image, the three modality image. Uh, so on the top, it, it's a patient with malignant nodule. On the 
uh, or by, uh, below is a patient um, with the benign nodule. And from left to right, it's the B mode image, uh, the color Doppler image, and here will be less of a. Uh, so B mode gives us the atlomy at, structure of the nodule, and the color Doppler uh, provides the uh, blood uh, signal information. And the uh, shear wave elastograph uh, gives us the, uh, the elasticity of the selection region, like, uh, like in the box, the blue box. Different color means different uh, elasticity uh, value. And so from our eyes, we can't really say any difference between the malignant and the benign nodules. This is why we hope that with the artificial intelligence, we can have some uh, better results. Because like this, in the doctor, they, they can't really use the information of the blood signal or the elasticity. <laughs> difficult to tell uh, how, how, what does this really mean. And here we have a look at our structural data, the supplementary data we used in the in in our uh, uh, our reason. So the structure data also has two parts, the patient information and the QBOX data. The patient information, they are read from an Excel table for, from the doctor, uh, including the personal information, the, the age and the gender, and the diagnostic evaluation, uh, uh, like the uh, TIRAD, TIRAD uh, score and some other score. These score are given by the doctor uh, according to the standard of the malignancy, uh, and the, and also the, some image description, like how is the contour and is there or calcium, cal 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 calcium, well, uh, and the, the and, and also the dimension of the nodules, and the last part is the SUV measurement. In fact, this come from um, PET, come from another imaging modality. Uh, positron emission and tomograph. Um, uh, and the QBOX data uh, is the uh, elasticity data we read from, from the image like uh, on the left. So on the left, we can see in the white box, we have two circles. The one in solid light uh, is, is located inside the nodule, uh, and the other one in dotted light is outside the, the nodule in the normal tissue around the nodule. Um, and uh, on, the, on the right of the image, we see a QBOX ratio uh, table. And in this table, we can read the uh, average, the minimum, maximum, and st standard deviation of the elasticity data in the selected circle, and also the diameter and the depth of the selection region. So uh, this is our structured data. And then the, uh, we have uh, this uh, classification scheme um, where it contains both the deep learning model and the and several machine learning algorithm. Um, first, we need to uh, train the, we need to train the deep learning model, VGG16 and ResNet15 by the three modality image the separately. And then we, after the training, we, we extract the features from the second fully connected layer uh, where the yellow, yellow mark is. Uh, and so that we, for every image, we have a feature array of uh, 40 or 4096 feature. And then we, uh, and then we combine these uh, image features with the corresponding structure data and apply several machine learning methods. Here we have chosen the decision tree, random forest, uh, extra tree gradient boosting, uh, log logistic uh, regression, and key nearest neighbor. Of course, we have tried some other one too, but because they didn't perform well, so we removed them later. And so after the machine learning, we got the final classification result. First, uh, we, we have a look on the deep learning on the image. In fact, this didn't give us good results when we apply directly the deep learning model on the image. And uh, 
and get the classification result and uh, directly from the, the network, the, the accuracy is not very high. And the sensitivity and specificity also, they are not ideal because when one of them are, are seems good, the other one is, is very low, which means in fact, the, the network can't really distinguish between the malignancy and the malignant and benign nodules. Uh, and uh, we here we have chosen the cross entropy as loss function and add an optimizer. Oh, and because we our, our database is unequal, we have much more, almost three times uh, more uh, benign nodules than the malignant nodules. So uh, we, we we choose the we we have done our equal sampling every time. We only choose the same number of. Uh, Benign patient, benign nodules than the malignant nodules, and uh, because the, this uh, direct class, classification result from the network is not good, so we we tried to apply the machine learning method, and here is the results. the The left image is sensitivity, uh, and the right image is the specificity. So, in terms of specificity, uh, uh, the for the three, di for three different modalities, they have showed similar um, performance um, uh, and they are not so bad between the, they are all above 0 0.8. Uh, and for, but for the sensitivity, the, the performance of the uh, B mode image is really much worse than the other two. Uh, but even the other two, they are not so ideal also between 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. It's not very ideal also. Um, and here, all the results, they are, they are calculated uh, after the 20 times cross validation. Uh, but, and also, they are evaluated by the, on the basis of image. Uh, if, you, if we remember, in, for each patient, we have more than we have PISA, we have maybe more than 10 image because we have in total 100, uh, about 100 patients, but we have 2000 image. So which means for each patient, we have multiple image. So this evaluation is only based on the ever image, uh, but this is not so practical practic because in, in real life, the doctor need to give the uh, evaluation based on every patient, not on every image. So we tried to do some evaluation based on the image also. So here uh, uh, below the index table, it's the evaluation on every patient. So we choose the best performance classifier among the six different um, classi uh, classifier for each modality image. And then we, we calculate uh, for each patient uh, the all the, to, to assemble all the all the re, classification results from from his all the, all of his image and then gets the average sensitivity and the specificity. So we say that um, for the Doppler and elastograph, I um, evaluate the best performance classifier on the base on the basis of every patient is much higher than the B mode image. Um, yes, so. After that, we uh, because we also have the structured data, and here we didn't really use it. So we also want to know uh, oh, the importance of different structured data. So here, first we have uh, we have joined the image features with all the patient information, including the SUV uh, measurements. So we found that the the decision tree really gave us very high sensitivity and specificity. So we'll have a look inside the decision not, not to figure out why it's so high. The performance is kind of too good. So in, in fact, we found that the SUV environment took the most important part here. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five. All, there are five, five among, the, among 10 factors in the decision not. They are from SUV environment. Uh, not really respond, uh, corresponding to our ultrasound imaging. It's another imaging, imaging method. And, other, and apart from this, there are, there are three factors from the dimension of nodules and 
only one is from the image features. So we know that SUV is very important, but we we can't we don't want to keep using it because it's from um, PET, not from ultra, ultra, ultrasound imaging. And also for this disease, we don't commonly use the 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 PET imaging for this disease. So later we have removed uh, the SUV part, and we have uh, tried to join the image features with patient patient information without SUV and the image features with the Cubex elasticity data and the image features with uh, all the two part of structural data, but without the SUV. So we see a drop in sensitivity and specificity in other three scenarios than the first one with the SUV part. And we see that uh, apart from SUV and, and the dimension of the nodules, there, there are two essential elements uh, in elasticity data that are important uh, for classification, the ratio and the SD. Ratio means the ratio of the mean elasticity in the region of interest and that of the reference region. Region of interest is the, is the circle inside the nodule and reference region is the other circle in the normal tissue. So we found that uh, this ratio, the, the elasticity difference between the module and outside module, it's important. And the SD is the standard deviation of the elasticity in the region of interest. So these two factors are important for classification. They, they can uh, approve the classification. So the conclusion uh, uh, is some interesting finding we have got so in the study. So in terms of the classification performance, the machine learning for the for the theory is not used. The machine learning uh, image features better than only the deep learning on the image. And uh, in terms of the three uh, modality uh, image, the Doppler and the elastograph they give better performance than the B mode. Uh, and and the, the joint features uh, they are better. They have better performance uh, than the features only only the features from the image. So, because so more precise that what helped the joint features to have better performance is the SUV and the dimension of the nodules, and also the elasticity data. They have also impro uh, improved the uh, classification performance. In fact, we can see a, a correlation here. We can see a correlation between the uh, Qbox ratio, the elasticity data, and the malignancy. From this table, we can see in, um, for for the patient of for the group of patients of with malignant nodules, their mean and standard deviation of ratio is, is they are all slightly higher than the group of patients with benign benign nodules. So, uh, which means they are they, they are more they are exist uh, higher in. Uh, in homogeneity in elasticity for the patients of malignant nodules than those of the benign nodules. Yes, but uh, uh, we can't really say how important this correlation it is and how exactly it is. Uh, this needs some more study, uh, I, I think. So also the, from the box, not, especially from the box plot of distribution of the distribution of ratio uh, STD, the standard deviation, we say the malignant group, they have higher uh, standard deviation on the ratio than the Eli ones. But also we can say that we have, in, 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 we have not enough, not sufficient uh, data in malignant group. Maybe with more data, we can see more clearly how these this, uh, how this ratio, this elasticity data influence the malignancy. Yes, and also we have we have to emphasize the limitation of this study. First of all, we uh, the, the our database is, is not so big; it's quite small. We only have one hundred patients, especially for the malignant patients, only twenty seven, uh, not enough. So, and this small and um, and unbalanced, imbalanced database maybe give us many bios. Maybe this is why in deep learning we can never get a good result. And the second problem is the parameter, especially for 
the for the machine learning part because for the deep learning part we have tried different uh, several different uh, configuration different parameters but for the machine learning part we basically just adopted the the default uh, configuration so maybe there are still many room to adjust the parameter for the machine learning methods so that we can have better or more, sta more stable results and uh, a last problem is the re reproducibility because for the last part of uh, the study on the joint features we haven't done the cross validation so maybe this the this so maybe yes this is something we need to yeah do later so that's all i didn't do all that in my internship so thank you for your attention Thank you very much. Any questions in the room or on Zoom? I have a first one. If, uh, yeah. Uh, so at the conclusion, you talked about the, the limited the size of the database, which yeah. you see is an issue and uh, trying to use uh, learning or machine learning techniques. Uh -huh. um, when you have a limited uh, database, uh, a small database, a common way to try to circumvent this issue is to, to try to do some data augmentation. Oh, of, of course, we have done the, okay, we have done the data augmentation. So we have five uh, uh, five type of data augmentation. The, the uh, we have the vertical and the horizontal flip, and we have the rotation be, between a round angle between. The zero and thirty degree, and also we have the translation in the rounding distance between zero and and ten. So each time for each image, we we up and uh, we apply. We have five trans transformation total, and each time for each patient, we randomly select two type of transformation transformation. So we have already done the data augmentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other question? Yes, but you know, even you do the data augmentation, still you can't change the fact that the malignant is much less how no matter how you yeah, transfer them. The ratio is still a problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Any other question? Of the specialists of the subject, maybe. <laughs> no? Yes. <laughs> okay. Then. Okay. Then uh, thank you again. For <laughs> very.